we, I think we just saw on Twitter someone actually asking, so what kind of crimes are actually uh, going through the system and, and, and being prosecuted? What, what, are you, what do you see uh, overall going through our court system? Well, I've spent, uh, about, I've spent about four years in a trial division where I had trials every day, tried well over 100 cases. My current assignment is I'm the felony docket controller in the city of St. Louis, so every felony case comes through my courtroom before it goes somewhere else. And I can tell you in the city, uh, what we are overwhelmed with is what I call street crime. We don't have murders and robberies that are carefully planned and plotted like on TV. What we basically have is street crime. And by that I mean you have people that come often from depressed or distressed neighborhoods. Um, and then it's the intersection of uh, just poor social thinking, bad planning. Um, and opportunity. So it may start at the very bottom, someone who has a drug problem and they're going to take a lawnmower out of your garage or uh, they're going to take copper piping out of a building. Uh, it may go up a notch and someone who has the opportunity to just take your cell phone off a table. And then it goes to the kinds of crimes with that, uh, that terrorize our neighborhoods where someone has a gun and they're gonna put that gun in your face and they're gonna take your backpack or your car. And uh, those people are, are doing things because they don't have the right social thinking. Um, and they're just not, they're not acting according to what consequences would be. Uh, and that happens over and over and over again. What, what do you mean that? What do you mean when you say they're, they're, they have poor social thinking? Well, um, by the time someone is in our court, they've already committed a crime. Most of the people I see uh, are people, like I said before, who come from distressed neighborhoods, depressed neighborhoods, uh, bad economic backgrounds. We see a lot of young men, uh, it's not always men, but it's often from 17 to 22 years old. Uh, they've dropped out of school. Uh, they have no job. They have no source of support. They don't have any structure in their neighborhood. And so they just, they don't think about the consequence of what they're doing. And if you give that person a gun, uh, something like that, they're not looking ahead to what the consequence may be. And they'll shoot you not because they don't like you or because they're angry at you, but because uh, it just becomes a crime of circumstance. Those crimes happen over and over and over again. We see them play out in our courtrooms every day. So is the fear, is there a fear of punishment and is it deterring them at, at all? Uh, you know, that's a hard thing to say. I, I think there is a fear of punishment once someone is in the system. But of course, um, Anyone who is in our courtroom and is pleading guilty or is being found guilty of a crime on any given day, and whether we're sending them to prison or whether we're not sending them to prison, it's very, very hard to draw a connection between what's going on in that courtroom and someone who is really committing the same offense at that same time out in the community. Um, that's not a connection that's very easy to draw. And uh, the community component of where the criminals come from is a very difficult uh, problem in the urban community. I'm sure you see stories repeat themselves in front of your bench. They, they do. Uh, we're fond, we often say you can't make this up, um, and, and you can't. So what do you wish that uh, you could say to the community, much like I asked the chiefs, what, what, sh what, what kind of maybe power do you wish you had as a judge that you don't to have a real impact on this problem? Well, you know, we're not law enforcement in the court system. Uh, I don't have authority to arrest anyone. What we do in the court system really, when you boil it all down, is it's our job to make sure the process runs fairly and then in the end, we make decisions that others either cannot or will not make. And, and that's our role. So, um, you know, I've heard from the community uh, folks here tonight, and, and I'd echo a lot of what they've said and, and what law enforcement has said and what the circuit attorney has said, that we welcome people into our courtroom. Uh, the court seems like a foreboding place. It seems bureaucratic. It seems difficult to deal with. But the fact is, I hear from crime victims every day. I've heard from the community organizers that you've uh, had on this segment tonight. Night. They've been in my, Mike Pettit has been in my courtroom many, many times. I haven't always done what he wants me to do, um, but I'm willing to tell them that to his face. Uh, when the communities come into our court, it serves two purposes, really. One is one that maybe they're not even thinking of. They're thinking that it's perhaps a show of force, and so that that's influencing our decision, and maybe that is a factor at times. But the mere fact that they've organized to come into the courtroom, that, that process is a really important factor 
in fighting crime in their neighborhood. And then the second thing is when they come into our courtroom, uh, we're not just interested in hearing that they're concerned, but as a judge, you're often looking for what I call a moment of clarity in making a decision. And you listen and you listen and you listen. Sometimes that moment of clarity comes from a, a source that you didn't really see coming. Uh, I've had community people come in and, uh, you know, I've got a report on a defendant and I've got the police telling me one thing and a prosecutor and the defense counsel. But someone will come in and say, you know what, uh, I know this guy is only charged with a low-level crime but we see him every, every day down on the corner in my neighborhood. Uh, and several other people say, yeah, we see him too. And he's not committing a crime. But, but that gives us a little window, that, that clarity that sometimes we're looking for in making a decision.